Hey guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Running a little late here today, but hope you guys are doing well, and I will wait a little bit here and see if we can get some people joining us live today. I hope your new year is off to a fantastic start, guys. Um, it gets crazy, though. I mean, this week has been extremely crazy for us. Uh, I'm wearing way too many hats, and I'm not keeping up very well, and I know we all run into that. So I thought I would talk about that this morning. Good morning, Vicki Lynn. So what is your weather like, everybody, in your neck of the woods? We have snow coming down really nicely. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's too much brightness. No, too much brightness over there at the window, but it's just, it's pretty. It's really nice, big flakes. We are supposed to get three to five inches tonight and another one to three inches tomorrow. So uh, snow's on its way. Thank you, Jill. Good to have you joining me. So my question is, guys, how are you doing with living with intention so far, um, being true to yourself, and if you are faithful, also being true to Jesus? Good morning, Chad. Ah, thank you, Chad. <laughs> thank you for my birthday wishes. I was trying to forget that today. <laughs> Actually, a birthday, and it is just another year. You're only as old as you feel, and I feel really young, so that's good, right? <laughs> But I wanted to touch on today and recap and hold everybody accountable for living with intention, being true to ourselves, and being true to Jesus if uh, that is your uh, intention. Those three are my intention. Um, like I said, I don't want to force that on anybody. Um, I know the benefits, and I would love to see others uh, partake on those benefits. Um, but for me, those three things together, I feel, are going to make me whole. They are going to, um, I hope, make me a powerful disciple that um, will, be, will be useful in inspiring other people and helping others uh, embrace their dreams. I think that the more we are able to help ourselves the more we are able to help others. That is what I, I see and I feel as we improve, as we better ourselves, as we um, find our purpose. Uh, I think that we, we become very powerful. And I, my, my thoughts on this year and getting organized is because when we are organized people, we are able to better um, keep ourselves together, keep our families together. Um, we are able to be um, seen as useful to other people that we kind of have it together. Not that anybody ever has it together. Little cutouts on my end. Okay. Well, hopefully this will hang on. Uh, Chad said it's cutting out a little bit on his end. The nice thing is, is once it goes out into the replay, it's usually all there. Um, our weather, I never know what's going to happen with our weather, so, and our internet, it's all a mystery. So, anyway, just bear with me, and thank you for the heads up, Chad. But one of the things I'm really feeling is that as we organize ourselves, and as we are able to be more focused, and able to be more whole, instead of so scattered and disheveled, which is, uh, I have to admit, I felt that way yesterday. We were just scrambling, and, you know, you're going to have those days, so when you get disheveled and when you get, um, you know, overloaded, don't give up and don't lose sight of the big goals. It's really easy to do because one disheveled day sometimes can run into another disheveled day. And after a while, you know, you, you focus on getting back on track, but you're focusing on what we feel is important and, and don't always pull back in and don't pull the reins back in to regroup on our big goals, the big picture. And today, later today, um, I do have an Evernote template that I'm going to put in the notes. And there's some really great resources that we will get to that are in the notes um, also. But I will add that. And I will uh, also announce it in the comments that I have put it in place. I just want to uh, test it. I didn't get a chance to test it. And I want to make sure it's uh, going to upload properly for you guys. But Evernote is something I use all the time. It really helps me to organize. Um, if you guys use other things, that's fine, but I'm going to put it in there so that you guys can check it out and see what I'm doing. What I do is I use this template every day. 
it's categorized by, let's see what I, I have my spiritual and God first, my health, I have personal things that need to get done, things that need to be discussed with my family, um, errands, phone calls, I then have research and computer work, I have my writing schedule because I have articles and books in the works, and then I have my businesses, which is Trier Wilderness, Trier Wilderness Academy, we have Trier Construction, I have my Trier Designs for my web design business that I'm also running, and then I have Home and Family, and the reason I have that at the bottom is because that list tends to be long, and it pulls everything else apart, so I have that at the bottom, and then I have my big goal set there, and uh, I'm going to share that, my big goal is Alaska, that's my family goal and we are striving for that so I'll share more on that later but I have these things at a glance and what you can do is you can duplicate this note to the next day so that way and it all has like when you enter the things that are in there they all have a box to check mark that you've completed it we all like to cheer when we when we are able to check things off it just gives us that feeling of productivity maybe usefulness um, it's a good feeling when you can check stuff off and it's a good thing when you can stay focused um, there's also some color coding that goes into my to-do list I have purple things bolded and, and in purple that have to get done for the day and then I have um, other things that are in a pink shade that are bolded um, so that I know those are next on the list and can't be forgotten can't get lost in the in the the long list that might might form. Um, yesterday we had a huge errand list. We try to go to town and just kind of make a big circle and get everything done. Um, and that's the first we've gotten to town in probably two weeks. So, you know, you got to do what works for you. But this has helped me greatly. And by able by being able to copy it and move it into the next day, and then you know remove the things that are already done. Um, highlight the things that now need to get done tomorrow and, and like I said last week what I do is at the end of my day you can do it however it works for you either the beginning of the day or the end of the day whatever works good for you to figure out your schedule I like doing it at night because it enables me to wake up be able to slowly get into my day with my cup of coffee my devotions and and then knowing that I can just go right into my schedule I don't need to think about it it's already prepared for me and sadly, like last night, I woke up at 11 o'clock and I looked at the clock again at 12.15. It, it, it really drives me crazy when I can't go back to sleep. My head starts spinning. And sometimes it does that if I don't unload what I've got to do for the next day before I go to bed. It just sits there and spins. How do you stop from getting down on yourself when your to-do list does not get done? Very good question, Jill. Let me, I'll touch on that in a second. But um, what... What I do is I, I brain dump at 1215 when I laid there for an hour and, and couldn't fall back to sleep. I knew that if I didn't empty my head, I wouldn't be able to go to sleep. So I got my iPad and I started recording everything that needed to be dumped out of my brain, which was really actually awesome stuff. So sometimes that stuff happens for us. Um, for a reason, um, maybe inspiration, maybe whatever, but have a notebook next to your bed, have your iPad, your iPhone, whatever, and, and dump that stuff, because that's sometimes where I get my best, best information, that and when I'm doing my devotions, or when I'm in the shower, which absolutely drives me nuts, I need to figure out how to uh, harness that bad boy, because when I'm in there, there's nowhere to write, there's nowhere to record it, and when I get out, it's gone, oftentimes anyway, but um these are the times when, when things of inspiration are being put into your head and you need to really harness those things. Um, I feel those are your inner voice talking. I feel that's the Holy Spirit talking. So um, record that stuff. But when you have everything dumped and you have everything ready to go the next morning, it's so much easier to embrace your day. Um, we have to be good to ourselves. This is going to address Jill's question. How do you stop from getting down on yourself when you don't get your to-do list done? Okay, we are only human. I, myself, Jill, have been forever, for a long time, for most of my life, uh, within the last three years, I've finally started being kinder to myself. Um, we're hard on ourselves. You know, we talk in our heads or out loud even sometimes to ourselves nastier than we would talk to anybody. And... We need to give ourselves grace. We need to be compassionate to ourselves because oftentimes if we didn't get stuff done on our to-do list, there's a reason. 
Now, the other thing is, too, one of the big reasons that we don't get things done on our to-do list is because we procrastinate. I can be really good at that if it's something that I'm not familiar with, like sometimes with our construction business, web design business, Trayer Wilderness, I've got to do something I've never done before. And sometimes we procrastinate on that. I have a sign on my wall that says, Tammy, you can do the hard. Just smile and do it. So I'm no different than you, Jill. You know, um, I might be in front of a camera and you're not, but when it comes down to it and boils down to it, I'm no different than anybody else. I got to put my big girl panties on some days too and really encourage myself, push myself. Sometimes what I need when I'm feeling that way too is uh, some form of inspiration. I either listen to podcasts or music. Um, I, I listen to a lot of Christian music. When I'm writing, I listen to just uh, acoustical music. Um, my podcasts, I listen to Todd White. Uh, I li listen to uh, quite a few different um, empowering business speakers too, like Michael Hyatt. And today we're going to talk about one um, that absolutely knock my socks off and I have to thank my uh, virtual assistant Michelle from Michigan for sharing this with me. Um, his name is Ken Coleman and I highly recommend you checking him out but sometimes we just need empowerment. You know sometimes we wake up uh, you had a weird dream it puts you on the wrong side of the bed maybe you don't feel well maybe you're sick. There's so many different scenarios as to why these things can happen but it all boils down to self-motivation and also learning how to get out of that spot. And also, like I said, showing yourself grace. You got to look at the big picture. You got to look at, even though you have a to-do list of 20 things and you only got two done, look at the come, look at look at what you got accomplished, and are you happy with what you got accomplished? And is what you got accomplished going to push you forward tomorrow? Those are the things you got to look at because nothing happens overnight, and baby steps are necessary, oftentimes, and. My to-do list oftentimes is very large, not because it's my to-do list, but it's my family's to-do to -do list. It's for businesses that are um, needing to be catered to. It's all kinds of stuff that needs to be uh, taken care of that I'm just responsible for. So it can be really cumbersome. And we just got to learn how to prioritize also. Like I said last week, I found that I am getting stuck in my email box. I also find that I get stuck on Facebook. I go on there to research something, look something up, and I end up getting stuck there because, you know, anything, you know. Um, I do minister on there. I like to really reach out to people and help people when, you know, they are down, when they need prayer. So, you know, I feel that sometimes part of that is my ministry that I'm doing. But at the same time, you got to put timers down. So if, you know, Jill, when you were, when we were talking last week, and yes, exactly. Amen on baby steps, Chad said. And that's true. We've got to learn to give ourselves grace because most likely um, when your to-do list um, upsets you and gets you down, I would bet a lot of money that you've got too much on it. And that was my biggest struggle all along, all my life. I'm a go-getter. I'm a pusher. I can accomplish it. I can help everybody and their brother and get, still get my stuff done and their stuff stuff done and my family stuff done. I, I'm a people pleaser. And then I end up flat on my back because I've pushed too hard. I've made myself sick. I've worn myself out. I've got adrenal fatigue. And I know all of you can relate to this. This is just stuff that happens. And we've got to learn to harness it. So that's where living intentionally really comes into play. So really analyze, you know, maybe why you didn't get more done on your to-do list. Is it because you got stuck in your email box? Is it because you got stuck on social media? Um, if you had a, a down day, you know what? You are entitled. If you, if you needed to take a nap, you are entitled. My, it also says on my wall, it's okay to take a nap and to rest because I would never give myself that. You know, um, I would associate myself with sitting on my couch and eating bonbons if I even paused. And you know what? We are entitled to pause. Those pauses are what gives us empowerment. Um, Michael Hyatt, that I talk about a lot, he takes a nap every day for 20 minutes, 20 minutes or a half an hour. He takes a nap. He just, that's part of his schedule. And, you know, we are entitled to those things and we don't give ourselves those things. We don't give ourselves grace. Yes, exactly, Chad. Um, serving serving is a, is a gift from God. And 
it's a really powerful place to be, a powerful thing to be able to do. And that's part of why I want to live intentionally because I realized I wasn't serving as much because I had my schedule too, too full and I was not allowing myself that privilege. So it's all about harnessing our, our schedules, figuring out where we're wasting our time, creating to-do lists that are, are reasonable, um, and, and being okay, you know, there's a lot on my to-do list. If I show you, I will show you my to-do list real quick. I will scroll, scroll through my to-do list. It's pretty insane, but you've got to realize that I've got things on that to-do list that I know, um, aren't going to get done today, but they're things that can't be forgotten. So my to-do list, if you look at it, it could be extremely overwhelming. Let's see if this is going to cooperate with me. There we go. Let me put my coffee cup down. Okay, now, this is not realistic if you look at everything on it, but if you look at the highlights, that's realistic. Now, we got lots of glare here. Let me see if I can... <laughs> Hang on a second. There we go. Maybe just from a side view. I mean, you get a pretty a, a good enough idea here. This is my to-do list for today. Okay, but like I said, you've got to learn to prioritize it and, and understand and not be panic stricken by it. Good morning, Holly. Um, when you see all that stuff on there, you know, if you're using this the way I am, or you create your to-do list the way I do, one, you don't forget things. They're there. They're reminders that they need to get done. They can be reevaluated every day, every week. And um, you look at what's the most important, and then you go from there, and, and you just keep moving it forward. Now, there is a fine line there. Don't um, get to the point where you're so lax because your to-do list is so long that, you know, you don't get to stuff. you got to be disciplined. you got to be disciplined, and that's why every week we're going to kind of step back a little bit and talk about this stuff because I want to keep you moving forward and not getting discouraged, not getting overloaded, not getting overwhelmed, and I want to give you tips and tricks every week to focus on this. Now, this is something else I do. Every night, I figure out my to-do list for the next morning. Now, keep in mind, life happens, and you've got to be prepared to shuffle things. Um, we learned very early here, um, already when we moved here in 2010, uh, that we needed to roll. And I learned to roll a lot faster, I think, than the mountain man, because I was already rolling with the mountain boy. With his autism, I had to roll, because I never knew what one minute, two minute was going to be like when he was young. And you learn to roll with your circumstances. So stuff doesn't get done, okay, I, instead of it being the end of the world, let's just refocus, how am I going to accomplish it? And rolling is important. You need to roll. You can't just um, fall and, and, and lay flat. You've got you to roll for safety purposes. So you've got to learn to roll. And you've got to learn to roll with the schedule sometimes that you are given. Um, yesterday, a dear friend of mine's daughter and her little girl is very near and dear to me. She's like one of my own. She had a seizure yesterday morning, and then they had to take her to the hospital. And she had a seizure there, and then they ended up at the children's hospital. So talk about rolling. You know, you've got to learn to roll. Uh, you're going to have priorities. And by the way, while I mention that, I'd really love it if you keep their family in your prayers. Um, they are very near and dear to us, and I'd really appreciate it. But everybody has these kind of circumstances, whether it's, you know, you woke up and you felt great, and by 10 o'clock you got sick and you ended up flat on your back. You've got to give yourself grace. You've got to roll with what's going on, and you've got to just figure out a new plan. It can't, you can't let it stop you. You can't let it uh, be the end of the world. Now, Holly message here. I'm going to try to read this quick and see. Okay, she said, this is such a huge problem for me because of feeling overwhelmed. Great subject to cover. Helps me to feel better about myself and my daily goals. I get distracted by many things, leaving me up too late at night playing. Right, and, and that's so true. And Holly, you're not alone. That's, that's why I am pushing on this so hard because this, 
that was me. Um, the same thing with Jill. That was me. And there's ways to get around it. There's ways to grow. There's ways to progress. And by um, progressing on these things, we become a better person. We become whole. We become more useful for other people. We can serve. Good morning, Deanna. Good to see you. Or here. Well, see that you're here. I wish I could see you. Um, and and the, um, Holly, for us, um, for me, the being distracted thing can really play a role because for the longest time since my surgery, that really affected my brain. Um, I, I had a lot of brain fog and a lot of disconnects, a lot of struggles where my thoughts would come in my head and as soon as they were there, they were gone. So talk about dis disturbing and, 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 and depressing and you know, a struggle. But that's where Evernote has become so helpful for me because when those thoughts come, I instantly learn to put them down. And, and get them recorded so that I could go back, even if I couldn't remember the thoughts at the time when they resurfaced and came back to me, that I would, I would have a bearing. And, you know, people with um, autoimmune diseases and Lyme disease, I know they suffer from the same stuff. And, um, you know, as we age, you know, my husband makes fun of me. Um, as we age, you know, you do lose some of that stuff. So, you know, you can challenge your brain, and the more you challenge your brain, the more it's going to work for you. And like I had mentioned back in November, um, doodling and unfocusing your brain, so going for a walk and just taking in nature, um, doodling, coloring. I have a journaling Bible, so I can... I pause and um, go back and color the things that were part of the, the morning devotions. And when you do that, you open another side of your brain that enables you to be more creative, which in turn makes the other part of your brain more challenged and work harder and work better. So, um, you know, there are so many different ways that we can harness these things. And that's why every week, regardless what my topic is going to be, we're going to touch on this a little bit. And, and make sure you guys are in check and see where you're at and see what questions you have. Chad says, Jill, your to-do list doesn't rule your life. Amen. Jesus rules your life. Ask him to guide you through your to-do list. I use this for, with everything. It doesn't rule me. Jesus does. So true. So very true. And and that is that is part of why my devotions are done in the morning. And, and that is part of my prayer to guide me through my day. Not necessarily through my to-do list directly, but in general, period, just guide me through my day. And, and that was it. You know, for me, my to-do list and my chores and my responsibilities ruled my life. And it was, it was unhealthy. And the other thing that we got to remember, too, is that... Oh, I just had a brain fart. See? Just like that, it's gone. It'll come back to me. Um, but... The thing is, we need to we need to focus on what's important. We need to give ourselves grace, and we need to just more more than anything, be aware of where our time wasters are. Because when you start realizing where your time wasters are, and you avoid them, all of the rest of this sort of comes together. And when you're true to yourself, and you're true to Jesus, and and you're living with intention, like I said, it's a powerful combination. I have to learn how to not be a perfectionist. I am a perfectionist, Jill, um, and so is the mountain man, and many people are. And that can be, you know, uh, here's, a, here's a quote from Michael Hyatt. It's better to embrace it than not to embrace it at all. And as a perfectionist, oftentimes that's what happens. We wait for things to line up and be perfect before we, we embrace them or um, we, we devote so much time into something to make it perfect that it could have done just the job the way it was. So, yeah, you know, you do need to learn how to, and it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that we are being any less um we aren't being any worse at what we're doing by stepping away when there's a point where we think our perfectionism is taking over. It's just being aware of it. And and sometimes, because we are such perfectionists, our level of perfect is so out of the realm that, you know, where we stop would be perfect for the rest of the world. So just keep that in mind. And yeah, so that's, so Jill, that's great. Because for one, you're paying attention to the things you know, um, that we talked about last week. You're realizing that your perfectionism may be giving you struggles. You're realizing that your to-do list is giving you um, poor feelings about things. Um, we, you know, the more we, 
realize these things and the more we put a positive spin on these things um, you know with the for example with the to-do list and and it you know being discouraged because you didn't get as much done you know learning to be okay I did good today I didn't get as much done as I would have liked to but I did get a lot of stuff done and this is my plan for tomorrow you know and and again if you realize where you're you're pulling um, away and wasting time that's key um, I wish I could remember what I was gonna say because I know it was really okay ah good morning Angela Angela says I'm not sure why I got notification of your video but it's perfect for where I'm at right now awesome divine intervention girlfriend um, thank you so much for the reminders perfectionism robs us of our joy and give up before we even start amen so true and that's exactly that's exactly my point and something else I you know when I when I was gonna say something it was in relation to you know our our schedules uh, owning us and and um, I know it'll come back to me so maybe I'll, I'll talk about it next week but what I want to point out too is that I feel that as when we incorporate these goals into our lives living with intention being true to ourselves being true to Jesus and harnessing our schedules being in control of them guarding them owning them and 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 rolling and giving ourselves grace you know this is where we are gonna to start to see our purpose in life so if you don't know what your purpose is on this planet I guarantee you you are still here because your purpose has not been lived out or you have a lot more to do with what you're doing as your purpose and it'll all get fine-tuned and a lot of people struggle in life because they want to know their purpose and they don't know what it is you know you gotta lean in and um, you know if you're if you're a Christian person um, pray about it because God will show you and God waits for us to ask so don't hesitate there Chad says Jill you should be one of you when it's okay God wants you to do your best in, at everything in your life he gave his son blood for us to redeem us I pray I want to pray for you Jill please PM okay cool very nice um, Chad's one of my greatest prayer warriors so if you ever have prayers uh, he's very he's very game to we together enjoy praying for our audience and um, it's important you know we all need prayers and we're all struggling in one way or another life everyday life isn't always perfect and I might make it look like we have the perfect life but we're no different than you we struggle too so keep that in mind um, you know in some weeks you're going to be rougher than others because life happens so when these things happen you know don't be discouraged but that's the benefit I feel of my to-do list because if I were to get sick for three days be flat on my back I can go back into my Evernote and know exactly where I left off I know what's still got to get done I won't forget anything because it's on a sticky note stuck somewhere where it doesn't belong or where it'll get lost how many of you are sticky note kings and queens I used to be that's where Evernote came into play and I still use them um, you know I'll record stuff on my notes and then at the end of the day when I'm recapping on my day and what's gonna happen for the next day I I record those I record those where they belong so that um, Evernote is searchable a sticky note on my desk is not searchable and it dry it, it, that's another wasted time uh, it's wasted amounts of time when you're searching for something that you know you have if you have it in the right place you don't have to search right okay and if you're good at putting things in that safe place and then you forget where the safe place is put it in the safe place and create an Evernote of your safe places then you're not searching I'm uh, trust me uh, we're all good at that now the unique the unique thing about our journey is that we have the ability to influence so many people and I want to influence people in a very positive light not a negative light and so many of us get stuck in negative modes because we are disheveled unorganized um, not being true to ourselves not living with intention our, our schedules are all up in the air we overcommit so we can't really be a good positive influence when we're disheveled and on the brink of tears all the time and that that happens to so many people and we need we that's why I want to focus so hard with you guys this year regardless like I said what we're talking about because I'll still bring it up when we're canning because there's ways to be organized when you're canning there's ways to be organized when you're doing leather work there's so much that we can do to save ourselves extra work and I wanna just keep checking in on you guys to see how you're doing and where you're at and what your struggles are because they're real and we all have them and a lot of us can relate 
So, and that's the other benefit of these chats is that as you've seen with like Jill and Holly, they're relating and you may not be commenting, but I know you're relating in some way or another. We're all having struggles with this kind of stuff and that's why we're all in this vicious cycle. So let's kick it. We're going to kick it in 2018. We're going to live with intention, right guys? How many of you are in with me on this? I hope all of you. Now, I like I said, was blessed with a podcast link by my virtual assistant, Michelle. She is, she is such a dear friend and a lifeline and the other half of my brain when it's not functioning. She shared with me a podcast by Ken Coleman and it was uh, actually an interview or a chat with author Andy Andrews, who is very good, by the way. Um, I didn't mention his book, but you can get the mention in the podcast, but it's called You Really Can Change the World. And, you know, maybe, you know, your goal is to just get your schedule intact. But it's pretty neat to see how we can, awesome Angela, it's really awesome to see how we can be an influence to other people's lives. And you know what, we may do things now and we will never know how we have impacted others. But you know what, if you don't do them, you won't know if you're, in, you won't impact anybody. And you don't, you know, for me, I don't need to know that I'm impacting people. I just need to know that in my heart I'm doing the right stuff, that I'm smiling at people, that I'm being a positive light to people, that I'm blessing and serving people because I can. You know, and these are the things that we can do that can make such a difference in people's lives. I was in a place um, when my son was young and I became a single mother very quickly, unexpectedly, and had the rug ripped out from under me. You know, my grandfather always told me to wear my um, smile every day. And I didn't realize how powerful those words were. You know, I, I say it now that when I get dressed every day, I put my smile on. And I do, regardless how I feel. That totally blows my family away and totally um, confuses them because they know I'm not feeling well sometimes. But I am determined to be happy. I am determined to make other people happy. And, you know, I was always the one in the grocery store that was smiling at everybody else and there was a day and I'll never forget it. I, I couldn't smile. I was in such a bad place and such a low place and thank the Lord that God was carrying me. Um, but also thank the Lord for this precious person who walked by me in the grocery store and smiled such a powerful smile to me. And it made me see how impactful that smile can be. And it's the ripple effect because you empower one person and bring them to a different level in their day. They're going to empower somebody else. It's just how it goes. So I want to empower you guys and inspire you guys to not only get a handle on your schedule for yourself, but do it because as you finally get a handle on your schedule and you are able to figure out where you're wasting your time and start spending it more wisely, you will start impacting people's lives. I know it, and I want to encourage you guys that. Um, Holly says she's in. My daughter helped me to put you on notifications so I know when you're on. Awesome. Good deal. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. And honestly, guys, I, I treasure you for taking the time every Wednesday to, to spend your quality time with me. I am really enjoying this, and um, I, I thank you guys as well. But I want to encourage you guys to listen to this podcast. It is long. Um, I try to keep mine under, I used to try to keep them under a half an hour and they'd end up being an hour. Now they're 15 minutes to a half an hour because I know how everybody's time is, uh, you know, golden. But if I can encourage you to listen to one thing, you are going to want to listen to this podcast. This podcast just totally knocked my socks off. This is amazing. I cried. I cry because it's just powerful. You'll never know the lives you touch. So clear your schedule so you can serve people. Clear your schedule so you can smile more. Clear your schedule. Live intentionally. Be true to yourself and be true to Jesus so you have your joy. So that when you are going down the street, people want what you got. It's that simple. It's that simple. So I want you to listen to that podcast. There is a link in the description. I encourage you to listen to it maybe when you're making dinner, while you're traveling, while you're washing dishes. I encourage you guys to learn how to look at your schedule and figure out how you can do the most useful things and, and overlap sometimes. Um, I do a lot of soaking uh, to retain my health and to regain my health. And when I'm in there, I, I, 
I have it scheduled so I know what, how I can use my time most wisely, whether I'm researching stuff on my iPad, whether I'm listening to something, um, whether today I just need to chill and just be still. You know, you know what you need, but learn how to multitask in a healthy way. And um, it's really important. Um, multitasking can be a killer. And it can, it can be a negative thing if you're not doing it properly. But when you're in a tr vehicle and you're driving for two hours, like I'm going to be tomorrow taking the mountain man to the airport at an insane hour of the morning. Uh, so say some prayers for our travel mercies because we're supposed to get snow. We need to leave here at 3 a.m. But during that time, you know, with him I will be talking. But on my way back I have two hours of deadness and I can listen to music. But I want to use that time wisely. So that's when I'm going to listen to these podcasts. So find time to listen to that podcast. And, and listen to it well. And I'll tell you what, I listened to it. I went, got half an hour through it, and I started it over, and I called my son out. And he was doing dishes then with me, and I was cooking supper, and we listened to it together. It was that powerful. So look, this is good for your kids, too. Um, the other thing is there's two books that I want to encourage you to check out. Um, reading is really good for your brain. It helps stimulate your brain, and we can learn so much. And knowledge is power in all ways, shapes, and forms. So in addition to reading my homesteading books, I like to read self-improvement books as well as a good novel so that I've got a different mix of education and a different mix of um, different things to bring me joy, okay? Because you don't always want to be challenging your brain because it'll eventually explode. Mm. It'll self Go on, Copper. So, The Slight Edge is another book. Um, and gosh, I just went totally blank on the author on that one. But very powerful book, um, and I encourage you to check that out. And the last lecture I have handy, The Slight Edge I have on uh, ebook. But um, the last lecture, this is an amazing, amazing book. This is a man who has died of cancer, um, and it was literally his last lecture. And it could not have been more powerful. And it is a real eye-opener for many people. And you can find um, both of those, uh, treyerwilderness.com slash the slight edge and treyerwilderness.com slash last lecture. But I want to give you guys fuel for your fire. We need, we need fuel to keep us going. We need fuel to empower us. And I get that from the Bible, but I also get that from other great resources. And those are the things I'm going to share with you. Um, Jill says, my biggest problems are too large of projects that I want to get done in an unreasonable amount of time. Baby steps, sister. I hear that. I hear that. And um, that's where breaking it up. Um, on, on, there's room at the end of my to-do list to add other columns. I have my goal of Alaska and under that I have baby steps of the things that we need to do to start formulating that dream and that goal. You need to put one down for your big goals and you need to start doing baby steps. What can you do first to get it started? What can you do next to keep it moving and so forth? Then it's not near as overwhelming. When we overwhelm ourselves we put ourselves into a paused state where we are just treading water. And we're not, we're not accomplishing anything. And so it's very counterproductive. And um, that's where you need to break these things down. And, and getting things on paper, there's a, I, have a, I have a very mixed personality, evidently. Because there's certain things I can record in my Evernote. There's certain things I can map out. Um, I'm going to put another link in there for you, Jill. It's called Mind Mapping. And I do that a lot with my writing, where you have a center goal, and then you can put little things around it. It's a, it's a graphic thing. It's a visual thing. Um, and, and it allows your goal to kind of spider out, where then you have your next goal and maybe some little goals underneath that to keep that one and get that one finished. It allows your brain to work. The other thing is pen and paper. We all work differently. Our brains work differently. We learn differently. We absorb differently. So that's why I always say my way is not the only way. But I give you ideas to start trying to figure out what is, is your way. Amy, I saw you join. I just wanted to say good morning. Um, so for me, there are times when I put stuff on pen and paper. Or it's easier to do this because my head is just spinning and dumping really fast. And I don't have time to type because sometimes the iPad is slow to respond or whatever. I, want, I don't want to miss it. And... So you need to determine what works best for you and, and what scenarios. And don't be surprised if you end up in the same boat that I am, where some things just work out better on paper. The other thing is have be organized about it. Um, journals and notebooks can be really 
um, I have a love-hate relationship with them because if you, I love them and I think they really need to have, but you have too many and, and you have too many books for different things and it can be cumbersome. So you need to find out what works for you. But I have a notebook by my desk and I have my iPad. They go hand in hand. They get carried where I go so that I don't have a boatload of sticky notes stuck all over. They end up getting recorded in places because I, I can't function off of sticky notes. I need to be able to search and find things quickly. I need to not waste my time. I've got too much on my plate. So what else are some of the other struggles you guys have? Uh, and, and thank you, Jill and Holly and the rest of you for putting things out there and asking these questions and putting yourself out there. Um, you know, that's a huge step in being true to ourselves is being willing to admit that we make mistakes and that we have struggles. You know, once you admit those things, that's stepping out of your comfort zone and that is enabling you to go to the next level. So kudos to you guys. And don't be afraid to ask these, you know, ask questions and to put yourself out there. And I'm going to ask this today. You know, for those of you that come in here later and those of you that are on YouTube that join me and watch this, what are your struggles? You know, your struggles will help me to focus in on topics as well to continue teaching on and, and to see where you guys need help and maybe something that I didn't think of that I have done or that I am doing but that I didn't speak, you know. And also, what are some topics that you would like to for me to touch on as we go through the year and do this? Because I am creating an editorial calendar for myself on the topics I'm going to talk about. And if you have things that you would like to learn, things that you would like me to touch on, things that you would like me to share that we've done, I would absolutely love to honor that for you. So don't hesitate and please ask those things of me um, and share those things. And like I said, share, share the struggles you're having. And the question is, what are some topics that you would like to discuss? And um, next week, we will continue to touch on this. Continue to check back on our website also. I'm really excited. We have some new guest writers coming in. And that's going to uh, give me some opportunities to focus my writing down um, to some very specific topics that I've been wanting to touch on for a couple of years now and haven't had the time. I'm, I'm a little bit spidered out too much. I wear very many hats. So um, I am trying, as much as you guys are, to hone that in. So we will have some guest writers coming, doing some do-it-yourself stuff, a lot of natural health coming your way, um, more on animals. And I will be focusing and sharing more on our nitty-gritty, um, on how we've actually um, accomplished things, what our journey has been like, um, really focusing on some of the off-grid topics too. Like I said, I have articles and books going on. So, so guys, I like it when you can hone me in and help me to better serve you uh, with the topics that you need. So I hope that was helpful for you guys today. If you guys have more questions, please feel free to put them in here now. If I jump off and, and I didn't see your question or answer it, you can be sure I will go to this later and respond to what you've posted because sometimes it doesn't show me everything for some reason. But guys, I'm going to pause and pray here for you guys and for, for our audience. So, dear Jesus, thank you for this time. Bless these people that have taken time out of their day to be a part of, of the live video. Thank you for your hand in our lives and helping us to realize where we could improve and just continue to guide and direct each of us in our lives. Help us through our struggles. Help us to honor you in all that we do. Help us to lean in and also to ask those questions of you too. You know, what is our, what is our purpose? What are we to be doing? How can we better do what we're doing? Help us to make it through our to-do list and just continue to work us with all of us and our audience and those that are in need and those that are struggling and just guide us every day and help us to continue to make some of these positive new habits stick and to be more focused in, in our lives and living with intention, being true to ourselves and being true to you, Jesus. So thank you guys and thank you, Lord, for... Uh, all you do, just guide these people and, and bless them greatly, Lord. And I ask that in Jesus' name. Guys, thank you so much for being here today with me. Ah, you're welcome, Holly, and thank you. <laughs> and guys, really, don't ever hesitate to reach out. Don't ever hesitate to ask questions. Don't hesitate to communicate with me. Don't hesitate to ask for other topics and, and things that you that we can help you with. Um, I love doing this. This is my this is my heart's desire.